Humans have organs so key to our existence that their Latin name, mamma, came to define the whole group of animals to which we belong. These are the mammals, defined by our mammary glands, the milk-producing organs often used to feed our young. If you're a mother who wants to breastfeed, knowing how they work is crucial to both establishing your supply and to protecting it during your breastfeeding journey. Breasts come in all different shapes and sizes. Even in the animal world, number and location vary greatly. Unlike all other mammals, human breasts become permanently enlarged with fatty deposits during puberty. In pregnancy, the hormone progesterone rises and tells the body to start transforming the fatty breast tissue into a milk-making system. It happens quickly. In a typically developing pregnancy, breasts are ready to produce milk as early as the 16th week. But the body is clever. Those high progesterone levels say to get ready to make milk, but not to actually make it yet. What changes? After birth, oxytocin, sometimes called the cuddle hormone, rises. Oxytocin also is released when a baby starts to suckle on the nipple. This oxytocin release signals to muscle cells in the breast to expand and contract, which squeezes the tiny balloon-like structures that hold the milk, the alveoli. This pushes the milk through each milk duct and out through the nipple in the milk ejection or letdown reflex. But milk itself doesn't come in right away. At first, there's a nutrient-rich pre-milk called colostrum. Often thick and yellow, it comes out slowly, partly so a baby can get used to the process of breastfeeding. There's not very much, but a newborn's tummy is tiny too. This is why they eat very little and as often as every hour. Colostrum also packs a punch in terms of antibodies, helping to build up a baby's new immune system. Each time a mother feeds her baby, a signal is sent to the brain to produce another hormone, prolactin. Levels of this hormone have been steadily rising during pregnancy, but its actions were blocked by the high progesterone and estrogen levels. When these hormones plummet after birth, prolactin kicks into gear, signalling to the alveoli to produce milk. This results in milk coming in around three or four days after birth. After a feed, breasts might feel softer, but this doesn't mean that they are empty of milk. In fact, about 30% of the milk supply always remains within the breast. You can think of it like an ice machine. When ice comes out, more goes in. This demand and supply system is regulated by prolactin, which spikes after every feed, and by the prolactin receptors on the cells lining the alveoli. If breasts are drained more frequently, they fill more frequently, and more receptors are produced. In other words, each feed places an order for the next feed. But if breasts are drained less often, less receptors are produced and fewer orders are put in, which can lead to a lower milk supply. It can also raise the risk of a breastfeeding journey ending earlier than a mum might want. This is why experts say that feeding responsibly, according to a baby's hunger cues, is so important, whether day or night. More than anything else, breastfeeding is a demand and supply system. Only by feeling demand does the body know to create supply. Here at UNICEF, we believe that with the right support, breastfeeding can be possible. This is why we advocate for governments societies and systems to provide more support so that women who want to breastfeed can be able to breastfeed.